This is what I'm going to be tying today. It's the Crazy Charlie. It's a really good fly for bonefish and even works for sunfish and some other like carp, um, some other freshwater fish, but definitely a bonefish fly originally. And um, I have a couple different variations that I put onto this. Um, one is being the, the material here. I didn't have D-rib, so I substituted. And you can do that, really, kind of with any fly. Um, but I wanted to tie this for you. All right, so we're going to start with putting the hook in vice like any other fly. This is McFly Angler. starts now and this is Risen's size 6 Shaughnessy hooks I think that's how you pronounce it and they're really good strong hooks um, quite sharp pretty good hooks for saltwater and for this application I've got this thread this is Vivas 6 Ot. you could tie with a little heavier thread I do like a finer thread for this we're gonna start right up by the hook eye I'm going to bring it back um, about a third of the way back, cut off our thread, and then we're going to come up once and back down halfway. And what we're doing is building a little bit of a thread bump there because we've got to lay some eyes on. And I've got these bead chain eyes, so you, you can buy these. Um, I actually bought these in bulk a while back because I was tying a lot of flies but you can buy these like smaller strips of actually about this size, uh, maybe a little bigger. <clears throat> but all of them, however you get them, this should be like about the size small. Um, but yeah, so you just want to cut off two and you want to use uh, wire cutters. You don't want to use scissors for this. It is metal, but you can tell now that we've got two eyes. Now, as you can see, I came back halfway. You don't want to be right up against the eye here because then it would be really difficult to tie in the materials. So you just capture it. I'm actually gonna wiggle this back just a little bit. And you want this to start about roughly an eye, like the bead chain eye length back. So as you can see, that's about it right there. And then we're just gonna figure eight this. You can make a couple wraps this way, a couple wraps that way, and then I go underneath, tighten, tighten. We should be locked in. Now you want to make sure these are straight. So I look at it straight ahead, make sure that it's it's good. It's a little, little uneven. There we go. That's about right. And then make sure of course they're straight perpendicular this way. You don't want them canted off to the side. Now a lot of people will add super glue. I actually like this Solarez ultra thin because super glue will kind of gum it up and then we'll mess with the materials when when tying in so if you're only going to be tying one or two this really helps because you just paint on a little bit on the eye cure it and now those are locked in um, and you're ready to tie now if you want to do super glue I would tie this whip finish and then put adopt super glue put this aside and let it dry move on to the next one if you're going to tie quite a few Tie a bunch of the eyes in, and then when you come back to that first one, it should be ready. All right, now we just want to build a thread base, and you want to keep these wraps pretty even. We're just coloring up the thread basically with this pink, all right, I'm sorry, the, the <laughs> coloring up the hook shank with this pink thread. And we're just coming back, and you want to keep these even. It also leaves a thread base uh, to keep the materials from spinning. Take your time on this if you're not, you know, able to lay a even thread base quickly. All right, now I've got um, four strands of crystal flash. I'm just going to capture it at the head here and pull it back. So that way it's not, you know, over the, the, the eyes there. And then we're just going to wrap this back with even wraps and come back up. 
Okay, so usually these are tied with something called D-rib. Now I don't have any in the right size, so this is 25 pound fluorocarbon, okay? And this should work too, if you don't have any. Um, the D-rib is softer, it's much nicer to work with and easier to work with. I do like it, it sits a little flatter. It's just a little, little better stuff, but hey, you know what? We don't always have all the right materials, and I just wanna show you a way that you can do it without those. And I'm really sorry about this bobbin, guys. All right, so once we tie that in, now we're just gonna start wrapping up. The crystal flash. Try to keep this as even as possible. I'm just making a little nice base on this fly. And by the way, the scissors I'm using, I actually use a different one, but um, I like these, the little mitten scissors, the really fine ones for this except for when we get to the fur, and you'll see what I mean in a second. All right, so now, we want to try to make these as even and touching as possible. So you're just gonna wrap this up the hook shank. What this does is it covers up those fragile pieces of flash. I want to try to get these touching. If one doesn't quite butt up against the other, you can always try to redo it. Does this make it perfect? No. Uh, that D-rib definitely is a little nicer looking, but you know, 25 pound Oh, and you know what guys, move for this part, you want to move your um, thread above those eyes. So that way when you capture it, capturing it this way. So wrap a couple over and a couple under. Now because this mono is really tough, I go move on to the hair scissors, they're a little stronger. Here we go. Okay. So let's bring the thread up. And then we can do this. However, I find that this gets in the way. I'm gonna show you a different way. We're gonna take this, and you don't need a rotary vise for this technique. And that's what, you know, if you just wanna turn it upside down, I find that this is even easier. So if you have a rotary vise, I'd recommend doing this because it does make this next step easier. Because now this is all open. You don't have the top of the rotary vise getting in your way of your fingers trying to get in there. And so I have this, this is um, calf tail, and it's in hot pink. You could tie this in any color you want. And then you take the hair scissors. So you want to pull off a little clump like so. Take the hair scissors and just cut that off. And go sparse with this, guys. It doesn't have to be super heavy of a wing. And you can see what I got there. Now I might even, you know, well I am gonna make this a little less uh, dense. So I'm pulling out the under fur, as you can see. Okay, we'll come up to the top here. That's about perfect, actually. And we wanna measure this out just a little past, maybe half a hook shank length past the, the um, hook, hook bend here. You can go a little longer if you want. You can go a little shorter, but I find that that's, for me, that's about where I want it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna Mark that measurement. Okay, actually we are gonna bring our thread right behind, and you'll see what I mean in a second, right behind the, the hook eye there, or I'm sorry, the, the bead chain eye. So I'm gonna cut this off square in a slight angle rearward. We're just gonna place our right there so it's sticking up over the eyes a little. Okay, we're gonna make one, two wraps to hold it. And we're just gonna pull this back a little bit so that way those fibers get behind that eye and then we can wrap it. And I find 
the finer thread really helps to kind of lock that in rather than the really heavy stuff. Boy, this, this bobbin, guys, I'm so sorry. It's obnoxious. All right. There we go. About right. All right, so now take that same crystal flash, but this time only two pieces. So you could use the same hunk or hank that you pulled off or whatever, or you could um, grab new. You just wanna lay this like so. Okay. Pull it up under. Wrap this. Pull back, wrap that over. So now you've got four pieces. You don't have to add crystal flash. I like it, but it does depend on where you're fishing. So then tie that back just like so. You can cut off the excess. Excuse my dog whining in the background. She wants to come in here, but not going to happen. All right, and that's a little long. We can trim that later. But the nice thing about this is now you've got it there. And if you decide that you do not want to fish with as much flash, you could always just lift this up and snip this off close and that's not gonna bother anything. All right, now you just whip finish and you wanna lay, cause this is gonna get in the way. You wanna go up over the eye here and lay that there. So that way, now when you whip finish, that's not getting in the way. You can whip finish and pull tight, trim close. Another reason why I like this solar res. So what we're gonna do is we are going to paint some solar res and it's okay if it gets into the eye and into even a little bit of the fiber. Okay, we're gonna paint the back of the eye there too. What I'm gonna do is to be able to lay this, keep this angled up a little bit, I'm gonna pull that up while I cure it. And boom, you can see how that now stands up higher because that resin cured hard while it was pulled up. There we go. Now that's that's definitely long, so you could come in and trim that close, sir. But you definitely, I would say you probably want that a little bit longer than the than the uh, the wing there. Well, that's a simple crazy Charlie. It's um, it's a very simple pattern. It's not very difficult, but it definitely works. And this pattern has had so many uh, variants come off of it. Pretty much almost all bonefish flies, I would say, is probably a variant of the Crazy Charlie. Maybe not all, but a, a good portion. So it's quite simple. Um, there are some extras that you can do if you want to, um, you know, if you want to add some rubber legs. I've seen people do that along the side. Um, you can make it like a gotcha where you've got some flash coming off the back here. Um, you know, you can do it kind of however you want. But this is the, the kind of what started all those patterns, kind of. It's the Crazy Charlie. It's quite simple. So you can take this, you can build from it, make it your own. You know, it's a good pattern. It works for sunfish as well. I really like it for sunfish. I will fish this for sunfish and get quite a few, actually. The way that it sinks, the way it hits the water, they love it. Um, even some people use these for carp. I haven't really had any luck with carp for it, but um, if you want to go freshwater, they, they work as well. But... There we go. Um, size eight, size six, even size four is pretty popular. You can tie it in multiple different colors. Tan is 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 popular. I had this really pretty pink uh, calf tail, and that is the normal material is calf tail. But you know, of course, like any fly, variants have happened where people use other materials, um, synthetics or whatever it may be. So it's up to you, however you want to do that. But there we go. If you haven't already, check out my sponsor, Risen Fly. They're the ones that made the scissors I've been using and also these hooks. They're good quality hooks and everything that they sell, not just their hooks, not just their scissors, but they sell rods and reels and a whole bunch of stuff, all high quality, really, really good quality stuff. Um, best of all, they're offering you all a discount. So type in McFly at checkout when you go to www.risenfly.com and you'll get 15% off of anything you order from them on your first order. Um, they do have some really good rods at a great price. In fact, they've got one that's $119 and it's just hard to beat. It is really a good rod for that money. Um, in fact, it's one of my favorite rods to fish. So definitely go check that out. I will see you guys in the next video. Now you go catch some fish.